Being the son of a king isn't a crime, but it is no guarantee of an easy life, either. Children born out of wedlock were common, and even rampant, in the Seven Kingdoms, but none sat in more danger than the sons and daughters of Robert Baratheon the Usurper. Especially after his death, Robert's bastard children were hunted and sought after from all sides. For one, his wife wished them dead due to the threat their very blood held to her own children, while his brother saw them through guidance as a means to gain the throne through ritual and manipulation. One boy in particular, who eerily resembled his father the king, was scrutinized and coveted for the supposed power of his blood. Edric Storm Hello everyone, and welcome back to Exploring Fiction. As one of King Robert's older bastards, Edric Storm grew up to be quite like his father, but was kept safe behind the walls of the greatest fortress in the Stormlands. After the king's death, though, his fate grew imperceptible, as mystical forces determined that his lineage primed him to be a necessary sacrifice for the good of the land. It seemed that Edric Storm's blood, a characteristic about himself which he could not change, now condemned him, when before it was a source of great pride. So, who exactly is Edric Storm, and why is he such an interesting character? Let's explore. Edric Storm was born the bastard son of Robert Baratheon and Lady Delena Florent in the year 287 AC. The night he was conceived was that of the wedding between Robert's brother Stannis and Delena's cousin Selyse Florent, and it occurred in the married couple's very wedding bed. Stannis took this as a great insult, rightfully so, and when Edric was born, he sent the boy straight to Storm's End to be fostered by his other brother, Renly. Wanting the boy, the reminder of such a deep shame, out of his sight immediately. Edric grew up comfortably in Storm's End, learning to read, write, and fight under the watch and tutelage of Sir Courtenay Penrose, the resident Castellan, and other occupants of the castle, rather than by Renly himself. Due to his mother's noble status, Edric was even officially recognized by King Robert as a son. Every year, he would receive a gift from the king on his name day, and Edric would write a letter of thanks in his jubilation. However, it was Robert's court that took care to recognize the lad, as the king had seemingly more pressing matters, but Edric remained unaware of this fact for his whole life. Though his father cared not enough to see him, Edric Storm resembled Robert Baratheon in both appearance and nature. He had the same flowing black hair and deep blue eyes as his father, with the same sturdy face and swaggering demeanor. Only his large ears showed any sign of Florent in his blood. Edric grew up to be a proud and noble boy, yearning for adventure and quick to stifle his fear. However, he had yet to leave the walls of Storm's End, and the real world was a harsh place indeed. Though Edric Storm isn't seen in the first two entries of A Song of Ice and Fire, his presence and mere existence are felt, especially in A Clash of Kings. After ridding the world of his younger brother through shadow magic, Stannis Baratheon lays siege to his childhood home of Storm's End. He offers to free the garrison stationed there if they just hand over Edric. As Stannis wishes to use the boy as proof of the illegitimacy of Cersei's supposed children with Robert. However, Sir Courtenay Penrose, Castellan of Storm's End, cares deeply for his young ward and fears that Stannis may not have the boy's best interests in mind, and so resists the demand. However, Sir Courtenay soon perishes under his own mysterious circumstances, and Stannis takes the fortress, sending both Edric and the Red Priestess Melisandre back to Dragonstone while he attempts to take King's Landing. In A Storm of Swords, 
Edric Storm remains upon the ominous island off the eastern coast of Westeros, bonding with young Shireen Baratheon and refusing the faith of the Lord of Light, opting instead to stay strong in the faith of the Seven like his forefathers before him. Still, pressure begins to mount on his uncle Stannis, who suffered a major defeat at the Battle of the Blackwater, and Melisandre points to Edric as the answer. She whispers into the ear of the Lord of Dragonstone, urging him to sacrifice the boy, who possesses King's blood, in order to wake the stone dragons and propel Stannis to towering heights. Sir Davo Seaworth, meanwhile, pleads for the boy's life, fighting for the innocence of a child seemingly doomed by his heritage. For a time, Stannis heeds the word of the Onion Knight. But one night, Edric is leeched, and the critters full of his blood are sacrificed in a ritual to Rahulor. Soon after, Rob Stark, Balin Greyjoy, and Joffrey Baratheon all meet their respective ends, and though no causation or even correlation can be proved, the coincidence is too strong to ignore. Fearing that King Stannis may finally ignore his better judgment and cave to the seductive suggestions of Melisandre to burn Edric alive as a sacrifice, Davos smuggles the boy away with a few loyal men on a ship bound for Essos. Edric has no time to say his goodbyes to the friends he's made on Dragonstone, but Davos surrounds him with a capable group of guards, and they sail away, Edric's resolve strong as ever. Davos defends his actions to the King and the Red Priestess, who eventually turn their conquering gaze northward, and Edric's storm continues into the east. In A Feast for Crows and a Dance with Dragons, Edric Storm is only briefly mentioned, and it is eventually revealed he currently resides in Lys, still protected and watched by his carefully appointed guardians. In his brief appearance in the greater story of A Song of Ice and Fire, Edric Storm represents a point, a line, a boundary placed on how far men of discipline are willing to go to obtain power. Even though King Stannis believes, truthfully, that the Iron Throne belongs to him, he cannot quite bring himself to burn and sacrifice an innocent child, as Melisandre suggests in his ear with frequency. Edric has committed no crime, save that he was born with the blood of King Robert, and so supposedly houses the blood that will grant victory for whoever sheds it and once leeches carrying this blood are sacrificed to great success, with the deaths of Kings Joffrey, Rob, and Balin, the truth becomes clearer or cloudier, depending on one's views. As presented by Melisandre, the ritualistic use of Edric's blood in a sacrifice to the Lord of Light is what granted the death of Stannis' competitors. While Sir Davos and others merely see coincidence, or at least convince themselves as much. After such an occurrence, Edric Storm sits in his uncle's grasp, his very life dependent upon the principles of a man known for both his stern adherence to his ways, but also for his ruthless manner in obtaining his goals. And though Sir Davos is the most loyal of Stannis' men, he clearly fears what his king may do if twisted to desperate measures by Melisandre and so sends Edric away, so as to eliminate the option of a sacrifice entirely. Edric Storm, more than many of his fellow half-brothers and sisters, finds pride in his heritage, but it is also what places him in the most danger. With the aid of men who see Rahulor's will as madness, he makes his escape, but he may never truly evade harm, simply due to the identity of his father. Edric Storm was not unique in that he was a bastard child of King Robert Baratheon. There were many who could claim such a title, riddled throughout Westeros. He was special, however, in that he was the most accessible of these children in attempts by Melisandre to prove to her king Stannis 
that the blood of royalty is indeed powerful in the ethereal realm as well as the physical. After the demise of all competitors in the War of the Five Kings, the Red Woman attempts to coax Stannis into sacrificing Edric completely in order to ensure victory. But before any damage can be done, he is smuggled away. Edric Storm exists as a test for not only Stannis, but all men hungry for superiority, to see how far one would go to get what they desire. Edric did nothing to wrong his uncle, but his death would certainly further Stannis toward his ultimate goal. Though he evaded a grisly end, Edric Storm still signified the price of a throne. So, that's all for this video. Leave a comment with your thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new here, I'd love to have you. Visit my website, russellawellsauthor.com, for exclusive fiction, reviews, and more. And sign up for my mailing list for free exclusive content. The links for both are in the description below. And, like always, I will see you next time.